Welcome to the Amphibian Press Podcast. I'm V.S. Holmes, and with me today is Anne Charles. And I'm going to give you a little teaser of her newest book, which is out on the 29th of May, The Devil Days in Deadwood, which is the 11th book in the Deadwood Humorous Mystery Book Series. Violet Parker knows better than to play with devils. They always cheat, especially when lives are at stake. Deadwood's charming, troublemaking, and soul-sucking devils are no different, and they're biting at her heels. But the clock is ticking, and Violet has no choice. She must risk her life to save her treasured Aunt Zoe. With any luck, she might be able to trick the devils and beat the old terrors at their own game. If not, Deadwood could end up short one executioner. And Devil Days in Deadwood is available on Amazon and where other ebooks are sold. Thank you, Anne, so much for, for joining me today. Thanks for having me here. So give me um, a little bit of the backstory about your Deadwood series and the inspiration behind it. Wow, it's been a long time. Seems like. Uh, <laughs> I've been I, <laughs> book 11, so we'll go back some years. Um, I spent a lot of time growing up uh, in Deadwood, South Dakota, in the surrounding area, the Black Hills. I'm not from there, but my mom moved there when I was pretty young. And so divorced parents, I went back and forth between where I grew up and Deadwood, South Dakota. So I really got to learn the history of the area over time. Um, spent a lot of time in the museums there. It's not a huge town. It's a wonderful small town with a lot of history, uh, very tourism based. So there's so much fun stuff to do. So that was kind of already inside my head. Uh, and I was writing other mm -hmm. stories and at this time I wasn't living there or anything, but I was trying my hand uh, first at romance and I wasn't, was okay at that, but I just got tired of emoting as much as you need to in, in a romance book. So I started <laughs> dabbling with more mystery and um, some dead bodies and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, kind of how I, I came into this mixed genre craziness that I do write, <clears throat> excuse me, which is mm -hmm. a little bit mystery and a little bit romance and a lot of humor and some paranormal and suspense, all that good stuff thrown together. So mm -hmm. I was visiting my mom uh, in South Dakota, and I was pregnant with my second child at the time, and I, I had a what-if moment. What if I was a single mom trying to raise kids and in this small town, and the big mine that was up uh, in the neighboring town it was a huge gold mine mm -hmm. for a long time. It had just recently um, closed down. And so there were a lot of people out of work and it was a little bit of a hard time there for everybody. So I put all that together. What would it be like to, you know, try to do this with um, kids and sell real estate? And that was kind of the birth of the Deadwood series. My husband and I came home from visiting my mom and we brainstormed this thing and um, talked about all the what ifs and what could be's and the characters and that was how Violet Parker was brought to life. Um, and so it started back then. And that was around 2007, I believe, or 2008 that I wrote and finished that first book, but then started shopping it through the traditional publishing channels. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's really kind of the birth of the whole series. Yeah. I, I love what you said about, you know, oh, well, this is nice, but like, I need I need the dead bodies. I need the mystery. I need you know all all of these things because I have a dear friend who who writes um, romantic suspense, but she also dabbles in urban fantasy. And um, uh -huh. when she was first trying to write like a contemporary romance, she's like, I I don't know what to do. There there are no monsters. No one's finding dead bodies. Like where are the explosions? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's it's a real skill. And I still read a lot of romances and I still love romance. I just mm -hmm. am no good at straight. That's all there is to write about, you know, romance and angst. I, I like to have a plot that is something more uh, action based adventure, mm -hmm. you know, treasures, something and then the romance within it. It just that's the way my brain tends to work. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, writing romance, and I've I've dabbled myself, but it is so incredibly hard. And I think it's one of those misunderstandings that a lot of people have with the genre, um, especially I think people who don't read it, maybe. Um, but they, they have this idea right. of like, oh, well, you know, it's just like two people falling in love. That's easy. It's like, 
Well, first of all, that's not easy in real life. <laughs> Second of all, it's really hard to write. Yeah, fill, fill yeah. pages and pages and pages of it. That's not an easy mm-hmm. thing. And so I have a lot of respect for uh, romance writers that pull it off and make it wonderful and funny and all of that mm-hmm. together. It's, I, I still dream, I still daydream of one of these days I'm going to write a, I'm going to write a romance, just romance and I'm going to pull it off. It's going to be so fun, but yeah, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> <laughs> soon, soon. <laughs> so right. did you encounter, um, any, any issues? Cause writing about a, a small town or, or a specific region, you know, especially when it's a, it's a real place, you know, I think we can encounter some difficulty with how much do we include and and how close do we get to the reality of that actual town without, you know, maybe ticking some people off. So was, was that something that that was a concern for you and and how did you sort of solve that? It was a huge concern because my mom lives there and I, I, I still joke that I don't want her to go to the grocery store and have people throwing tomatoes at her, you know, saying your daughter really botched this up this time. What, it, what was she thinking? Mm-hmm. So it was very important since I'm basing this off a real town and all the history that's in that, you know, comes with that town that I don't screw this up. So I, from the start, um, did a lot of research, what I already, you know, knew from growing up there, but then adding a lot of research in. And pretty early on in the series, uh, I ran into um, a local at one of my signings. And I was only, I think, two books in. And she came over to me and we started talking and her brother is wonderful historian of, of the neighbor town lead and the whole area with mining. And so she knew a lot about the, the towns and it just kind of a friendship developed and started before it would go live. The story, I would use her as one of the beta crew to read through and let me know what I have wrong locally. And there's fine tuned details when you use a real location. For example, uh, when the clock strikes noon in Deadwood, you would think it's the courthouse clock, but it's not. It's it's the neighboring Adams Museum clock that's that strikes noon. And there's trees. There's the big trees by the post office. These old beautiful trees. You can't just randomly pick a tree. You have to pick the right. You know, is it an elm? Is it a, you know, whatever oak tree? So little tiny details like that that you might skip over. You know, not worry about too much in a fictional town when you're using the real deal and you want to get the people in that town behind you, uh, especially a tourist town like Deadwood, where they, they are wonderful about promoting my stuff to tourists because it, you know, represents their town in some way. You want to get it right. You don't want to screw that kind of stuff up. So from the beginning, I've, I've, I mean, I, with that first book, I played it pretty safe, but as we kept going, I've have locals, and especially this one in particular, Sue, who helps me uh, reading through, making sure things are spot on, you know, with the stuff that's that's nonfiction. I, I put a lot of fictitious buildings and, and history mixed in with it, but then I still have the, the real deal correct. So mm-hmm. unless you want to anger those who might really help you sell the story, you, you need to be as close as you can to what's true. Mm-hmm. Well, I- I think that's probably why so many people, especially in, I think, um, thriller and mystery genres where really terrible things can be happening. I think that's why so many authors choose to kind of do this, this hodgepodge, like fictional town, you know, it's, it's clearly a nod to, to this city or that city, but it's, it's not technically, you know, that, that actual place. Right. So something that you, you mentioned and that, you know, I've also noticed a fair amount in, in other books, this sort of crossover between, you know, classic mystery thrillers that have this little hint of of the paranormal, even if it's not an actual urban fantasy or paranormal romance book. And and oftentimes it's it's almost closer to like a magical realism or fabulism type genre. Mm. Why do you think that is that we we usually include just this this little hint? Of, of something otherworldly in those genres that are so rooted in science. Speaking from an author's point of view, <laughs> um, 
I, <laughs> when I was planning this Deadwood series, for example, and initially I was thinking straight mystery, it would not be paranormal. I mean, it would have still the, the romance and other stuff, but there was not initially going to be a lot of paranormal it would be more ghosts, you know, and that's just because Deadwood is to this day, you go there and they talk about the ghosts that are throughout the town. Uh, a lot of places are haunted. So I wanted that element in it. However, as I started writing and kept going and, and went from, well, maybe I'll try to get into a traditional publisher and make this fit, you know, their mold more to, okay, I'm just going to go forth on my own and let this mm -hmm. story develop and this series develop. I found that for a small town, especially, you can have a few mysteries and it's believable, but too much and small towns don't usually have that much going on, you know, constantly to mm -hmm. keep a, a detective or any kind of person like that, that busy, but you throw in that paranormal and it opens up a wide world of story and fun mm -hmm. and adventure that goes beyond just a mystery. So as an author, one of the things I love about including paranormal, whether a little or a lot, is that it allows my creative brain to play in such a bigger playground and much more vast, you know, possibilities that can come out of character and have to deal with. So I think that's a big reason some of us, some of us authors enjoy dabbling in the paranormal. As a reader who tends to enjoy that as well. I love that the possibilities are much wider um, for what could be, you know, as I'm trying to figure out what's yeah. going to happen in the story and it opens that up wider. And, and I find that fun. Plus I've had enough of reality some days <laughs> with the news. So yeah. let me have fun <laughs> with paranormals, you know, all kinds of action and adventure because that's ironically a lot of times that seems safer and less stressful than real life. So mm -hmm. I think there's a mix of of what brings people to it, right? And some people just love ghosts and the paranormal. They just crave that kind of thing, mm -hmm. which I'm glad it, it you know it makes it so we could have fun together. Yeah, well, I do think there's something to be said for monsters that are. Um, you know, actual monsters, there's, a, there's an honesty to it, um, or, or even just the possibility that they could be, as opposed to our, you know, more human monsters that we encounter, you know, on a, on a daily basis, especially if we're looking at the news, like you said. Right. Yeah. And also, I mean, just sort of thinking about that small town thing, because I, I grew up in a, in a small town, and, and I live in a small town. And I think there's so much rich folklore you know, re regardless of where that small town is, mm -hmm. that you can really kind of tease apart and paranormal stuff just lends itself to the folklore background, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And small town's fun because you really get personalities. Um, they come out sharper, brighter, it seems like, in small town environments. Mm -hmm. Even those who don't like to be around a lot of people will be out more because it's a small town. So it lends itself to a wider range of humor, mm -hmm. I think, which I love to include in my stories as well. Yeah, there's there's definitely something about that, like, tight-knit community where you have the people that you you don't really get along with, but you're all part of the same community, and you probably need, you know, their, their kid to mow your lawn or whatever it is. Right. That, that sort of tight-knit community that doesn't necessarily get along um, is, is really fun to certainly read about and fun to write as well. Right. I agree. It, it makes it, like I said, there's just so many opportunities for humor mm -hmm. uh, in a small town where everybody knows everybody. Now, now this might be a dangerous question, but did you incorporate any actual people that, that you know, or that your mom knows into the, the series? No, <laughs> I was very careful <laughs> with that. Yeah. Um, Cause I go there still and I, and I wanted to, um, make it so it's it's fun it feels real you can drive around Deadwood in the area and find the buildings and things that I kind of chose for different things or the houses where they the area where they live but I did not want to um, in any way 
step on anyone's toes or anything mm-hmm. like that. Now, I did include my mom okay. at one point in the or a couple times in the early book, just a mention of um, a business and her. She was in charge of the business, so I threw her name in there just for fun. But otherwise, the characters are fiction. Even when I take a character like Wild Bill Hickok, who is, you know, died in that, in Deadwood, Calamity Jane, who spent a lot of time in that, when I use them, I am still careful. I don't really touch a lot on what history says, because there, for one thing, there's so many versions of right. these people. Um, they're bigger than life now. So there's been books and books written about them. And I just want to be careful not to make this into any kind of historical debate. Right. It's just a story. We're having fun, you know, so I, I'm so careful about that too. But I do create, you know, plenty of fict- fictitious characters that interact within like the Deadwood Library, which is a real place. And I use the real, you know, the real deal in my story. Um, but they're, they're in there, but then I've created, of course, the characters and the situations. So it's layer of protection, if you right. will. <laughs> And it also lets it be fiction for those who know the area. So we know I'm not talking about any of the truths here. Nobody freak out about what's out there yeah. you know, kind of a thing. And what's what's great is the locals, the locals have really, um, for the most part, they like it. They encourage, you know, they're very helpful in promoting it. They have fun with it, um, even though, you know, that they're amongst where everything is. And probably because they're used to their town being, um, this tourist attraction. So it doesn't feel like people are, you know, interrupting their lives. Right. This is what they're used to is the tourism. Yeah. I, I think that's really fun too, with being able to kind of play around with these characters, but not actually include anyone. I, in one of my series, um, I draw a yeah. lot from my coworkers and our, our interactions and some of the really funny and outlandish anecdotes that we have. And I, I sort of worry cause it's like, well, if they read this, they're going to know that that's their joke or that's, that's their, their story that, that they told me. Um, but I sort of try and keep it at that. And then, um, I do, I do like a a giveaway with each of my releases that you can get written into the next book as like a side character. But I figure if, if you're, if you're playing that game, then you're sort of relinquishing a little fraction of your identity to me to, to sort of play with as I will. Right. Right. That's cool. That's fun. Especially for the fans. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and I think all of us, like the idea of, you know, being the extra on the set kind of, um, Mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about your dig site series. Cause I mean, my, my listeners know this, but my day job is as an archeologist. So (laughs) I, I was quite fascinated by, by that when I saw it. Really? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. That was one of my dream careers when I was younger (laughs) until I, I found out how much writing is involved with it. Um, and then I went, that's a lot of writing. So, and then I always, you know, ironically, now I write for a living, but <laughs> it's very, um, <laughs> very so the dig site series, yeah, <laughs> that's that the dig site series. Um, so like I said, I, I wanted to be, you know, the old Indiana Jones. I wanted to be an archeologist at one point. Uh, and I, and I really looked into it and I did a lot of reading and whatnot. Um, it just wasn't in the cards for me. However, that doesn't mean that dream ever really went away. Mm -hmm. I still love the idea of being an archaeologist. I don't like the bugs that you might encounter out in the field. (laughs) But I do like um, many elements of studying history and, and really learning about, you know, the culture and all that good stuff. So take that bubble there of what I wanted to be. And I, the dig site series. So it's set down in the Yucatan mm-hmm. at different Maya dig sites. And I've studied many, but then I decided, unlike Deadwood, I did not want to use a real site. Right. Because, again, you have people who are experts and who are going to come in and go, well, I don't think you did that correct or this correct. And rather than risk that in a work of fiction, I thought, let's just create some really wonderful dig sites out of, you know, of my own that incorporate elements of different ones that I've read and learned about, but not, you know, no Chichen Itza, none of that (laughs) good stuff. We'll just mention it in passing. Um, So, and, and I wanted a heroine who was an archeologist, you know, to live that dream that I've always wanted to. So I created this whole, you know, book. Now, interestingly, 
I actually wrote the first draft of that book way back at the beginning of my writing career, long before I was published. It was uh, the second book I ever wrote, and that version is trash. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. <laughs> but I wrote it through the end, and I, I had a lot of good ideas. <laughs> I had some ideas in there that I loved. So a few years later, as I kept working to improve my skills, you know, as a writer, I pulled that book out and it was, this would be book four now, um, trying again and rewrote it, same characters, some not, rewrote it again and uh, submitted that one to some contest. It, it finaled in the Golden Heart for the Romance Writers of America. And I did not win, but it was really enlightening of, okay, this, this can be something I can do this. Maybe it just Mm -hmm. wasn't quite there yet. But so I put that book away again and I worked on this book called dance of the Winnebago's. And that is the first book in my Jackrabbit Junction mystery series. And that book, I ended up getting an agent and I wrote the next book as we were shopping it, but it was that mixed mess. So then I went, wrote the first Deadwood book and I wrote this other, you know, and I was doing all this other thing. And then we moved to Arizona and I said, I can't write a new book. We'd moved from Seattle. I was right. just too worn out from the move, um, moving our family down here and all the stress. And I thought, I cannot write a new book right now. I'm tired. I need to work on something that my brain would like to, you know, just have fun with. So I pulled that book out again and I rewrote it for the third time. <laughs> and that's, the first book with what the wind blew in. So it still has elements of those earlier two versions, but I made a lot of changes because that was, you know, 10 years, not quite 10 years, more like eight years later coming at it again. So that is how this, this whole dig site series came about. Now, by that point I had Violet series, the Deadwood series out. And so I took the hero in it, Quint, um, in the Dig Site series, and I had already thought about this when I was writing Deadwood, and I made it, he's her brother, so we oh, have yes. Violet up <laughs> in Deadwood dealing with what she deals with, and then we have Quint down at Maya Dig Sites dealing with what he's dealing with down there, and both have paranormal elements, and both are kind of mysteries. Um, it's just the one down in, you know, the Dig Site series, of course, being archaeology, it has a lot of adventure mixed in with it. So, that's kind of how this whole, it was actually there first, but then I brought it back around and tied it, you know, did this all, but it's so much fun to write. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like one of my dream come truths. It takes a lot yes. more work to write, um, being the, the archeology span and all the culture, as you know, yeah, there's so much, mm-hmm. um, to incorporating things and making sure I have glyphs, correct, uh, mythology down there, correct. So much, you know, the language, the little bits of that I add in. So uh, I do want to write the third book in that series, but right now I'm, I'm trying to get through a couple of things that I have to get done mm-hmm. for the Deadwood series before I can return to it. Now, were, were you able to go down to the Yucatan and do like on, on site research? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to Mexico several times, but not to that part. Now I have children. And um, I do not want to take my kids down there, Um, not just because, you know, I know we've heard all the tourism stuff. It's not, you know, the dangers. More than that, it's when I go, I'm going to want to enjoy the culture. I'm going to want to to soak up Mm -hmm. the atmosphere. All these things just sit there, you know, for an hour and listen and smell and look so I can really, you know, be there. And anyone who has children knows right. that just doesn't happen <laughs> when you have kids. They're like, I'm bored. What are we doing? And then they're running and chasing a snake or something. So I can't handle that with kids. So now I'm waiting until they're older. And then my husband and I have talked about, you know, trips to various locations. So I have read tons of um, journals and blogs and articles and I've studied the history. Um, there's some wonderful books by um, anthropologists mm-hmm. that I've read who lived there amongst them to really soak up what their lives were like, what modern day life is like. So it's been majority research. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, I can watch videos and stuff too, which is wonderful. Yeah. I just can't smell it yet, <laughs> but that's okay. One of these days I'll get down there. 
if, if you do get down there, I have, I have a couple places that I can recommend that you check out um, that might be a little off the beaten path. So <laughs> Yes, I would love that. You should email me that, yes, and I will save it in my files because I will be down there someday. Yes. I just have to. I got a few more years with these kids before they don't care to go <laughs> with me anywhere anymore. So Before you're boring, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what's next for you. I mean, obviously, the the next in the Deadwood series is coming out on the the twenty sixth. But what else are you are you working on, and um, are you sort of hoping to to get under your belt in the next year or so? In addition to this Deadwood mystery series, my husband and I write a series called the Deadwood Undertaker series, and it is directly tied to my Deadwood mystery series. And this is the same town Deadwood the same everything's the same the same world only it's back in the old west oh cool so we're learning what happened in the past in the old west version in the 1870s we're learning what happened in Deadwood then and the things that you know it's paranormal western so what went down and it explains a lot what's going on now and but it's a fun story from the past and it's a series so that's uh we have the first two books out in that series, and then we're he, working on the third book. He is currently working and doing um, writing and getting all this stuff done that he he does his part of it. And then once this he reaches a certain point, then I can come in and do my part to add, you know, to the story with what we do. So that is the next book after the Steadwood Eleven that comes out is the Undertaker series, book number three. Can't write around it. So that'll probably be out in September. And while we're getting that out, once I step, you know, do my thing and step away from that, then I'm going to write the 12th book in the Deadwood series and hope to have it out around Christmas time, if all goes well. Uh, after that, I want to, I really want to write the third Dig Sight book, mm-hmm. but we shall see if, how it all falls into place. Uh, there will be a fourth Deadwood Under- seri- Undertaker series book coming out as well sometime around then. So it's a lot of Deadwood for this year. 2020 is kind of the year of Deadwood for <laughs> me, it seems like. I'm just hanging out there. Well, it seems like a lot of us kind of feel like Deadwood yeah. uh, lately. So yes. <laughs> You said 12 books. Um, do you have an idea of whether you're going to end the series or is it just going to be sort of a, a continuation um, until, until it's not? Um, or do you really know how it's going to end? I know how it's going to wrap up that series. Mm -hmm. However, there's a lot between now and then. So I don't have a set number. You know, long ago when I first started, I said 12 seems like a good number. And here (laughs) we are coming on 12 and we're, we're just past, uh, we're between the first turning point and the midpoint in the whole series. Oh, wow. So so yeah, I have a series arc that I, I have in mind and I keep moving the books along those um, as we go. So there's much more to come. Key to how this all plays out, of course, are the readers and mm-hmm. the stories. And so long as everyone's still enjoying the books and we're having fun, then of course we'll keep going along the series arc that I have planned. Um, and see what happens. I I don't know. Sometimes I think, boy, am I going to write this until I keel over? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's been a mine. It's been a wonderful world of possibilities in this series. And the it seems like with every book where we answer some questions from before, there's all these new questions that keep opening up. And because of the history, because of the paranormal elements, It just, it seems like it keeps getting wider and the possibilities keep growing for me. So we have, there's a lot of mythology that comes into play with the Deadwood series. That's part of the paranormal. There's a ton of, I'm always reading different mythology, different cultural mythology. Uh, German plays a lot into it, but all kinds of, you know, things from creatures and ghosts and beliefs come into this series. So I don't have an end in sight, meaning time-wise. I have an idea how this is all going to wrap up. I I know that. But for now, I'm in the middle, and we're enjoying the trip. So we just keep going. (laughs) 
<laughs> I I love that. I mean, I I can't seem to not write a series. Um, and I think part of it is is like you said, you know, I'll, I'll start to really get into it. And even if I've sort of planned it as a standalone, I get halfway through and I think, oh, well, what about this or what about that? And like, maybe I can explore this, you know, this location or that character a little bit more. And, you know, then we're at, you know, six, 12, 18 books and <laughs> and no, no one in sight. So. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, if, if you're like me, you get really attached to your characters, too. Yes. And you don't you want to it's fun to go hang out with them and be with them. And you don't want that to end because they've become your friends. Mm -hmm. And there's just so much fun that happens when you're with them. So there's, it's kind of addictive in many ways. Yeah, for sure. So where can people find you online? And I mean, obviously right now there's probably not a lot um, of live events going on. Well, yes, mostly right now so much is online, of course, because of the current coronavirus situation. Yeah. But um, I'm actually heading up to Deadwood this summer at the end of June and we're going to have just a couple book signings, not our normally, usually every year I have a big Deadwood fan party and it lasts about four days. And we end it with a huge, you know, we all get together at a location and there's a party and there's special guests and we do all kinds of fun stuff. But this year, of course, we can't do that with the situation. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it would have been, I think, the eighth year of the fan party. So I had to postpone that to 2021 for now. However, I'm still going up there uh, for one Thing. I need to see my mom. She had a bit of a problem this spring, a sickness, mm -hmm. and was in the hospital a short time. And I really want to go up and see her since, you know, she had this whole thing. She's doing fine now, much better, but That's good. we're going to, you know, be careful, take all the precautions, race up there, not yeah. stop, just drive straight through and, and then be careful while we're there. And I think we're going to do a couple of outdoor signings with plenty of space around us, masks, hand sanitizer, the whole works, but I'm going to be there mm -hmm. and I want to see, you know, those who, a lot of, a lot of fans are still coming because they too are going nuts in their house and they know the precautions and they're coming with all the stuff, you know, the masks and stuff. So I will be in Deadwood, but usually I do a big summer trip where we go to several locations. Unfortunately, I had to cancel those and just stick with Deadwood this year. Uh, otherwise, I am online and I've been doing weekly book clubs for those who come for a Facebook Live event. Oh, good. You just have to follow my Facebook author page and you can come, you can participate, ask questions. We give away a, a gift. Uh, we do a drawing every week and give away a fun gift. And we talk about the books in question or the book we, we you know, determine, but we also talk about, you know, all questions are welcome. So, that's been going on weekly, mm -hmm. and I think I'm doing the ninth one tomorrow. You can find the past videos on YouTube or on my website, on my blog. There's a behind-the-scenes thing, but I'm also on YouTube, and I have them all over there as well. So if you're curious and you want to learn about the behind-the-scenes on a particular book, that's where I tell you stories about what I was thinking, you know, some of them like what we talked about today. So I'm available yeah. with that. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, usual social networking things. And as well as my website, you can email me through that. So I'm out there and the books are available wide, um, multiple, you know, vendors, Kobo, Apple, Nook, Amazon. I'm in audio as well. Almost all the books are available in audio and print as well. So awesome. I'm out there if you look for me. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like we don't, we don't have to look too hard either. <laughs> right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I had a really fun, fun time talking with you. I always like talking archaeology and small wow. towns and people. See, I'd love to just sit there and pick your brain about archaeology because that's just... <laughs> you, you totally can. <laughs> I appreciate you having me on here and it was really oh, fun. And now I'm going to daydream about archaeology this afternoon some more oh, since good. we talked about it. <laughs> but I, I appreciate your questions were really fun and, and interesting oh, and, and different. So it was great. I, I, I try to get a little deeper into the, the history and the, the background of people's writing, because I think a lot of times with quick interviews, you know, we're, we're answering the same questions over and over again. And right. um, while those are, you know, decent questions, it's nice to to get into it a bit more. Yes, definitely. Makes it more fun for both sides, I think. So yeah. 
This was great. Yeah, for sure. This has been the Amphibian Press Podcast. I'm V.S. Holmes, and with me today was Anne Charles. Thank you so much for listening.